Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince and here we have a re revisit. So this is the MacBook Air 2020 that was purchased from eBay and uh, had water damage and Apple wanted £460 to fix. So I couldn't fix it at the end of the first video. I got advice from Anonymous Repair and others in the second video and then I managed to get it boot but it was unbelievably slow. Well guess what? it's working. Look, it is now completely responsive and working really, really nice. Look at that. I couldn't have done that before. Every time I hovered over one of them, it took ages to go into it. If I was to go up here to this menu here and click, you can see it's instant. The display, everything is just working. Well, no, not everything. There's something that I'm going to show you. You can see there that that's all working fine. If I go into the battery icon here, it comes up straight away, battery 44%. When I plug it in, it does actually charge. So now, plug that in there. You hear it made a little noise and then in a few seconds it will come up there. There you go, gone to charging. And it says here, power source, power adapter. And if I leave that plugged in, that will grow from 44%. So what was wrong with it? Well, it was in limp mode. Now, I knew cars go into limp mode when there's a problem. And it's, it's limp mode to get you home. I didn't realise that limp mode existed on laptops, but it does. The only thing wrong with this was the battery, which most of you did say down in the comments of the second vis uh, the revisit video. So as soon as I changed the battery, I plugged it in and turned it on, and it just instantly turned on. So obviously it needs to have a good battery in it. Now I thought because it's connected to the power supply it wouldn't even need the battery connected, but no, you need to have a good battery in it. Is there a way that I can make this battery work because it's just that the voltage has dropped? Possibly. The problem is because there's three different cells, I'm not sure which contacts to go across up here to, uh, to charge the cells because you'd need to do it balanced. If I could get charge into it from my bench power supply, maybe then it would be recognized and start working. But at this moment in time, I can't. And looking online, I've only so far found one video and the guy had quite an expensive bit of kit that you plug the Apple battery into and then it, uh, it mounts it and un charges it. Uh, it unmounts it, charges it and then mounts it. So I don't know if it's as simple as just putting charge into the cells. I think maybe you need to tell it because this has chips and stuff up here. I think you need to tell it that uh, you need to mount it and unmount it and stuff like that. So unfortunately, it did need a new battery, which is a shame because the other one looks perfect. It's just a case of it's low on voltage. So uh, yeah, that is it. A massive thanks to everybody that helped me out. I'll just flash up a few, just a few, because there were so many comments on that video. Uh, I'll just flash up a few of the, the, the comments on the screen here as I'm waffling along. So if ever there was a community fix, this is one of them. I'm so happy, it's working so nice. So that inductor that we took off for that power rail, obviously it must be doing something, but it doesn't seem to be too important because this is working fine. So if I was to go into Safari, I'll show you something which is not working, which is an irritant, but it's not enough to warrant trying to fix the board and damage something by reboarding it because it just takes 10 extra seconds of your time. Sorry. There we go, that comes up straight away. If I was to go to YouTube, you can see how quick and responsive it is. If I was to go to my mate Vince. And there I am, that's the second attempt. So if I was to play that. There you go, you can see it's all working fine and it's nice and responsive as well. Volume. from mymatevince.com and in this video today it is a revisit video on the 2020 Air that Apple was charging 400 and something pound to repair. Brightness. Here in case you haven't. So you can see it works absolutely fine which is great. Now is there any problem with it? Well I'll actually let me tell you so I changed the battery and then uh, yeah it started working but yet it had all the previous person's stuff on it. Now it had already said that iCloud and stuff had been taken off but I had real trouble trying to get it to load up again. This is on Monterey I think it's called so this is the latest iOS. 
what I had to do is, so I had to wipe it, and then internet recovery didn't work over Wi-Fi. Even though Wi-Fi is working, I'm on Wi-Fi right now. Uh, so what I had to do is I had to use a wired connection. So I've got one of these USB-C to digital AV adapters. I had to use one of these with one of these, a little uh, Ethernet dongle. But it still didn't work because I was trying to use a gigabit one you know, a USB 3 one. When I plugged in the USB 2 one, it works straight away. So this one here must be just a USB 2 port. Uh, so it didn't recognize it at all as USB 3. But on USB 2, the light started to flash. As soon as I plugged the dongle in, then when I went to Command R and Shift or whatever it was to get the most recent one, uh, it's it works straight away. But even then it loaded up Catalina and then I had to download Monterey after that. So it took quite a bit of time to actually get to this stage here. But there is a problem. So last night when I turned this off and went to bed, this battery was on something like 90% and now it is on 48%. You can see it was 44, but now we've plugged it in as 48. So the problem is when I turn this off, it won't let me turn it on again. And it looks like, if I go to shut down, Oh, hold on. Oh, one second. I want to show you this fingerprint thing's working. So if I tap this here, and if I go onto one of my other fingers, you can see it's not unlocking. But watch this. <laughs> so the fingerprint ID thing is working, which is quite nice. Uh, also, when I close the lid, it does go into sleep. And then when I open it up again, I've had a, a quick look. Well, you can see the screen came on, but I've looked. The screen definitely goes to black. Yeah, so that's there. So let me shut it down. The problem is when you shut this thing down, you can't turn it back on again. Now that sounds like a major nightmare, but it's not because you only have to hold down the power button for 10 seconds and then tap it and then it will work. So it's taking 10 extra seconds out of your life every time you use this. But this is what I did last night and the battery was on, I think, 80 odd percent or even maybe 90, no, 80 percent, I think it was. And then when I turned it on this morning, it was at 44 percent. So at this moment in time now, somehow it's still using up the battery. So what I'm going to have to do is every time I turn it down, I've got to hold down the power button for 10 seconds. And it's not kind of seven seconds or something. It has to be the full 10 seconds. So I'm just going to do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now that I've done that, the computer will be fully shut down. Now, all I have to do is tap it as normal and you'll hear after a few seconds the chime. There we go. And this is how quick it is to boot up now. A lot of people are gonna think that's slow, but that is normal. Well, before what happened is it would do this bit quick and then from now on it would take forever. But what it will do now is it will just make that little noise and then go through that nice and quick and we're ready to go again. So uh, that's great. But if I was just to shut it down now and if I don't do that 10 second thing, it doesn't work. How strange is that? Yeah, so okay, give that a few seconds. And now if I was to hit that as you would normally do, it won't work. I have to hold it down for the 10 seconds first. That took me quite a, a while to, to work out that little workaround. So obviously that is not right. If it was something simple like a, a faulty cap or a resistor that's been knocked off the board, then 100% I would fix it. But if it involved changing out chips and reballing it, it's too much risk because this board's been through enough already. And this is a fully functioning MacBook. You see, it's not working, uh, fully functioning for what I need it to, or what my son, my son's gonna have this one, uh, for what I need it to do. So what you can see now is not working, but look, let's just I fast forward through it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then tap it as normal, and it will come on normally. So it's not really much of a hardship, and uh, yeah, the MacBook's working really, really nice. So. Massive thanks to everybody that helped me out on this. I've had so many comments on it. So we had loads of comments on the tingling, which is to do with that wire that grounds it, or earths it, I should say, because it's coming from the mains. And uh, Anonymous Repair really helped set me on the right path, telling me what to look for. And then after all that, I've had loads of comments on how to fix this slow MacBook. And again, the comments were correct. So massive, massive, massive thanks to everybody 
that helped me on this. This is just a quick vi uh, video to say thank you and to show it working. And if any of you are having the problem where your laptop is in limp mode, working really, really slow, it might not be anything too major at all. It might be a battery like this one here. So that is it. Thank you so, so, so much. And I will hopefully see you all on a fix very soon. Take care, everyone.